Day 3M and welcome to your lesson on circles and the sine ratio. Our goal, I know how circles relate to trigonometry and can relate rotational angles to points on a circle. Uh, so we're going to deal with this uh, circle here. I have to um, tell you that a lot of times we represent angles on the Cartesian plane and so this is the Cartesian plane with our x and our y and this is called this positive x quad or x axis is called the initial arm and we have an angle between the initial arm and this blue line and this blue line is called the terminal arm Now this angle is in standard position because it goes from the initial arm to the terminal arm and we're going to call this angle theta. Now this is a positive angle because we're rotating in the counterclockwise direction. Negative angles rotate in the opposite direction. So if we call this here theta as well, it is a negative angle. And I want you to notice that there are two, co there are two angles here in the positive direction, if this were a positive angle, it would be um, more than 270 degrees because this goes 90, 180, 270 and into the fourth quadrant is between 270 and 360 degree rotation. Um, so a negative angle has a corresponding positive angle that goes with it and we still call this thing the initial arm and the terminal arm. Now negative angles are not in standard position. When we call something in standard position, we want it going from the initial arm to the terminal arm in a counterclockwise direction. So if we rotate 360 degrees from one angle, we get a second angle with the same terminal arms. Angles such as these are referred to as coterminal angles. So if I have another angle and I rotate all the way around and then get back to the terminal arm, I have exactly the same terminal arm but I have 360 degree more rotation because I've already gone around all the way once and then a little bit more. So every 360 degree rotation finds another coterminal angle. To find a coterminal angle all you need to do is add 360 or subtract 360 from the given one. So let's take a look at these two angles. Uh, if I want to find a coterminal angle with 60 degrees, um, I could add 360. So 60 degrees plus 360 gives me 420. That is another coterminal angle. Uh, and I could keep going. I could say, okay, I'm at 420. I'm going to rotate another 360. And so every time we add a rotation, that's going to be 780 degrees. We get another angle with the terminal arm. Now this 540, I could subtract 360 degrees to get a coterminal angle, or I could add 360 degrees to get a coterminal angle. And that would give me... Uh, 180 degrees or 900 degrees. Okay. So those are two more and I could keep doing that. I could keep adding 360, adding 360, adding 360 and I'd be getting another coterminal angle. Okay. Now every point on a terminal arm can be thought of as sweeping out a circle as the arm rotates. So here's my terminal arm and I'm going to put a point on here, point P. Now I'm going to sweep out a circle. So here's my compass. I'm going to put it there. Let's line it up here. Whoops. Whoopsie. Let's stretch that out more. Line it up with my P. 
There we go. Now we'll sweep that around and you can see it sweeps out a circle. And if we think of that as sweeping out a circle, um, all circles have uh, equations x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Now if that looks a bit like the Pythagorean theorem, um, that's no coincidence. Let's just see how that relates to the Pythagorean theorem. I can draw a right angle triangle and it doesn't matter where that P is, I can drop this down and draw a right angle triangle. And if this P had coordinates x comma y, then that means that this side length over here is side length x and this side length up here, since that's the y coordinate, this distance here is y. And so if we want the radius of the circle by Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And since it's a 90 degree angle, I can probably relate it to the three Pythagorean, or the three um, primary trig ratios as well. Um, but let's have a look at something down here, example two. Uh, it says that the given points are on the terminal arm. Find the radius of the circle and the angle in standard position. Okay, so I'm just going to draw just sort of a rough circle here. Very rough circle. Um, five, four is out here. And I want to find the radius of this circle. Well, let's use Pythagorean theorem. Uh, R equals five squared plus four squared, which equals 25 plus 16, which equals 41. So R is the square root of 41. I'm just going to leave that as the square root of 41. And now it says find the radius uh, and the angle in standard position. Uh, well, if I want this angle in here, I'm going to use my primary trig ratios. I need opposite over hypotenuse to, to get that with sine. So sine of theta equals opposite. Now remember I said that this was, um, this is the distance above, so that's four, and then this distance across, so that's five. So sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, so that's going to be four over the square root of 41. And that means that theta is going to equal the inverse sine of 4 over root 41. And that is going to be 39 degrees. Now, that's in standard position. This next one is not going to look quite so pretty because negative 3, negative 4 is down here. Now I can draw that right triangle in there and figure this little thing out using my SOHCAHTOA. Um, so I know since this is negative 3 that this length is 3 and I know since this is negative 4 down that this length is 4. Now this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle so that's going to be 5. Um, if you want to see it figured out, r squared has to equal uh, 3 squared plus 4 squared, which equals 9 plus 16, which equals 25. So r equals the square root of 25, which is just 5. Now I can find this little angle in here. That's not a problem. Uh, I'm going to use sine to find that sine theta equals, and that's going to be the opposite, which is 4, over the hypotenuse, which is 5, so 4 fifths. So theta is going to equal sine uh, negative 1 of 4 fifths, which gives us shift sine 4 divided by 5, uh, 53 degrees. But that 53 degrees is just this angle in here. That's not the angle in standard position. I need this whole rotation from the initial arm to the terminal arm. So I have to add that 180 degrees on there. 
So in standard position, we have to take 53 degrees and add on 180 degrees. So that is 233 degrees. Okay. Now, moving along, let's think about the unit circle. A unit circle has a radius of 1. So if I pick a point on the unit circle, I already know what the radius is. Oh, that's really bad. I already know what the radius is. Let's actually draw a real line on here. And I can draw on my little right angle triangle. And so here's what we got. If this is theta in here, and I know that this is 1, because I've said it is. It's a unit circle. That means the radius is 1. So this line here is 1. I know this is a right angle. And I'm going to let this point out here, any point on here, be point P X comma Y. And this works for any point. Um, this side length here, again, it's the height above the X axis, so that is the same as the Y coordinate, and this over here is X. So let's take a look at the three primary trig ratios for theta. Sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. So that's y over 1, or just plain y. Sine theta equals y. Uh, for cos theta, we have adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's going to be x over 1, or cos theta equals just plain x. And for tan theta, it equals opposite over adjacent, which is y over x. Now that works for any value of p, and it also works if this unit circle gets bigger, because when it gets bigger, all we're going to do is get similar right triangles, and they'll all have the same value for theta. So here's what we know. On a unit circle, sine theta is y, x is cos theta, and tan is y over x. But there's more than one point in the unit circle that will have the same x value. So let's see, I've, if I've got this point here, so that that has x, y, this point down here has the same value of x, if we're using the symmetry of the circle. It has the same value of x, and its y is just negative. So it's got the negative y of that one because of the symmetry of the circle. Now, if I take, pull this point across here so that it has the same y value, then because of the symmetry of the circle, it's going to have the negative version of the x. So that's going to be negative x comma y. And then if I pull this down here, I have um, negative x and negative y. So I've got four points on the unit circle that all have x and y in there somehow. Sometimes it's negative, sometimes it's not. And so that means, um, first of all, if it's got the same x value, this in here and the other one with the same x value way around here, those are both going to have the same cos value because x was cos theta. So I've got two angles within this thing that have the same value of cos. Works the same with sine. This angle in here has y and over on this other one, it also has y. So those two blue angles are going to have the same sine theta. So I've got two different values, and it works for the whole thing. Um, and sometimes they're positive and sometimes they're negative. And what we usually do is give them the short form. Down here, 
C uh, stands for cos, and down here I know that cos is positive, so cos is positive. Up here, A stands for all, which means all are positive. Over here we're going to use an S, which stands for sine, which tells us that sine of any angle in this quadrant is positive. And down here, um, the tan, the T stands for tan, and tan of any angle in here is positive. So, cos is positive in this quadrant for any angle that terminates in this quadrant. In this quadrant, they're all positive. Sine, cos, and tan, everything's positive because this is a really positive quadrant. Over here, sine is positive, so any angle that terminates in this quadrant is po has a positive sine value. And down here, tan, any angle that terminates in this quadrant will have tan as a positive value. So let's see how this can help us. Uh, the terminal arm makes a 120 degree angle in standard form. Find point P. So we got a terminal arm that's at 120 degrees. We want to find point P, X, comma, Y. Well, that's actually pretty easy because remember, X was cos theta and Y was sine theta. So that's actually going to be pretty easy. P is going to be cos 120 degrees and sine 120 degrees. So the, quad, the coordinates of P are uh, negative 0 0.5 and uh, 0 0.866. If you just plug that into your calculator, cos 120, sine 120, and that makes sense if you look at it. Um, when we go backwards here, if this is 120 degrees, it terminates in quadrant 2 um, because 90 degrees terminates at this angle, and then 120 degrees has to go over here. It's not quite 180, which would be a half turn. Okay. And so that means our x's have to be negative and our y's have to be positive. So that helps there. Uh, example number four. If sine theta equals 0 0.6375, find the measure of the angle in standard form. Now, here we've got a little bit of a problem. Because remember I told you that sine was positive in this quadrant, but all of them are positive in this quadrant. So we can, we're going to have two different angles, one there and the symmetric one over here. Now my drawing doesn't look symmetric, but let's pretend it is. So we can find theta by doing sine negative 1 of, this, of that ratio, 0 0.6374. But keep in mind your calculator is going to just give you this one. And we're going to have to use the symmetry of the circle to figure out what this second one is going to be. Uh, and I don't think I pointed out before, but this these letters spell cast, C-A-S-T, so this is called cast rule, and so we want to find out what these two things are. So what the calculator gives me is shift sign of 0.6374. The calculator gives me um, 40 degrees approximately. So this in here is 40 degrees. And by symmetry of the circle, that means that this in here is 40 degrees, which means if I want to find this angle, this angle right here, I have to do 180 degrees, which is half the rotation, minus this little 40. So 180 degrees minus 40 degrees is 140 degrees. So, either the angle 
is 40 degrees or 140 degrees. So there's two different angles that we could have there. So I would like you to actually try a few questions. Um, what I'm going to have you try is page uh, 245. Oops. Page 245. That's page 245, number 1 to 10. Uh, you can do every other part. We're going to be working on this for a couple of days. Hopefully this video has uh, hasn't been too confusing for you. It's a little hard to explain um, over the video. Um, so give that a try and I'll see you tomorrow.